crawl out of my closet, look at me, and crawl underneath my bed. It actually makes me sick to my stomach. So when I was 19, I moved into this house after a breakup and I found this room on Facebook Marketplace. This girl was selling her room or whatever, subleasing it. And it was, I think, $2.50 a month. And I was like, yeah, let's go. So I moved into this place and it is a very old home. It was made out of local stone and it was on this block that all the houses were made out of local stone. And if they weren't made out of local stone, they would not still be standing. I'll just say that, they're very old. So this house had been converted into separate apartments and I was living in a room that you had to walk through a bathroom to get to. And this room was also connected to another bedroom, but we just put like furniture in front of it. So it kind of felt like a bedroom. So that's where I was staying. And the first night that I was sleeping there, I was woken up out of a dream, don't know what I was dreaming about, and I saw this woman just like hovering over me, looking at me. And I looked at her for a few seconds, and when she realized I was looking at her, I just saw her eyes get really wide, and she looked nervous, and she disappeared. And I've never really given that a lot of credit because I was waking up out of a dream, you know, sometimes you just see things. I don't know. But then the next day when I was leaving to go do something else, you know, I was opening my door, going through the bathroom to get out of the house. I swore that I saw someone like crouched in the corner of the shower. And I thought that was weird. But because of the night before and how I was like, that was probably just a dream. I'm probably just paranoid right now. I'm not gonna give it any credit. So time goes on, right? And I get a cat. Love the little, little thing, she's precious. And it gets to a point where, you know, I'm 19, I'm full-time college student. Her food was more expensive than mine and I couldn't afford to keep her anymore. So one of my friends took her and I noticed as soon as she was gone that things started to get a little hairy. Like from that day forward till I moved out, every single day something happened. Didn't matter if it was daytime, nighttime, or anything. But that little figure that I had seen crouched in the shower was a little boy. And he was very upset that my cat was not there anymore. So what did he do? He terrorized me. Like, it got to the point where I had to rearrange my room so when I would wake up and roll over in the middle of the night, I wouldn't see him because he would stand in the corner where I had my cat's stuff as if, like, protesting that she was gone. And that was every single night from that point on. During the day, I would have hangers and clothes fly out of my closet. Did not matter. Door would open. I like how she's obviously had time to process this whole situation, but I love how she's just casually talking about this. I <laughs> be traumatized. Oh my god. Closet and clothes would just fall out. And it just, it became a normal thing, you know? Like, I would see him and I wouldn't think twice about it because I, I didn't want to engage, I didn't want to encourage it. So what I would do is I wouldn't say anything. If he was really scaring me, I'd go, I'd go to someone else's house. I just dip out because, you know, like child spirits, you don't, you don't really know if it's a real child or not. I think this was a real child because he was just throwing tantrums and taking it all out on me. The scariest thing that ever happened with him though was I was doing laundry one day. I guess my cat had probably been gone for a couple months now and I'd, I'd become adjusted to seeing him. It wasn't anything new. And I was folding my laundry on my bed and I watched him crawl out of my closet, look at me, and crawl underneath my bed. It actually makes me sick to my stomach even thinking about it because um, I don't know if you've seen any scary movie. It was horrifying. So yeah, I I dipped. 
I didn't come back for like two days um, because that was horrifying. And before I left though, I did get on my hands and knees and look under the bed to see if he was there. One of the bravest moments of my life, he wasn't. And at that point, I was already done. You know, I didn't care that I didn't see him, I was done. So, I mean, my laundry was clean, it didn't matter. I dipped and from that point on, um, it never got that bad again, but he was almost always in the shower when I would be leaving um, and the way that our bathroom was set up like the mirror faced the shower and there would oh there would be times where like I would be getting ready <laughs> I'm crying I would be getting ready and I would see his little stinking head pop up in the mirror and I had to start sleeping with a face mask because I would roll over in the middle of the night and he would either be in the corner of my cat's stuff or he would be at the end of my bed. Or he'd be in another corner. Like it was, it, it was something straight out of Insidious. And um, I'd say that's, that's one of the worst ghost stories I have. At that house, definitely, because I never saw that woman again. There was one figure I kept seeing in the kitchen, but I never saw their face. They only stood with their back to me. So, you know. I think our timelines were just crossing or something, but no one else in the house that lived there ever had any encounters that I know of. And yeah, so that's how I was terrorized by a little child, ghost, spirit, for uh, having to get rid of a cat, for being poor, essentially. Oh my God, that was so much to watch. I was thinking, where is this gonna go? I think it's just horrendous. The fact that she had no money, she was in college, which I've been in that situation where you just have like a set amount of budget and you've gone for the cheapest place. You know, she's sharing basically a room with someone in a house, wanted to get herself a little cat and I guess I feel better. And this little boy was throwing tantrums at her, like terrorizing her, standing in the shower, the mirror, under her bed, crawling in her wardrobe, in the corner of her. I just, I'd be so scared. I don't think I could ever look at a little child ever again in the street. Like, if there's a little boy with his mum, I'd just turn my head. I could not. That is so scary. God, she's went through so much. And you can tell she turned the brace, that's it. She just said it so casually, like, oh yeah, a little boy that like, got out of his wardrobe and crawled under my bed. These ghost stories lately are just insane. In fact, no one else has like, gone through the same thing. Like, I wonder if her housemate went through it. Maybe that wasn't something they can bond over. <laughs> but that's so scary. God, I really don't know how to process that. I would have got the cat back. <laughs> I would have been up to my friend. So sorry, I know I gave my cat to you, but do you mind if I borrow my cat for a bit? Because <laughs> I'm getting terrorized by a little boy. Or well, just get him like a, a stuffed toy of the same cat and just leave it in the corner of the bed. Put it on the um, stand where the cat would be. That's what I would do. Oh my Christ, that's so scary. All that over a cat. 